Let's bring in the FEMA official who was fired over the incident, but claims she has been made a scapegoat, Marnie Washington. Marnie, thank you so much for coming on. I want to read this because this is from the FEMA administrator, Deanne Criswell. She said this, and she's talking about you. She said, quoting here, recently, a FEMA employee departed from these values to advise her survivor assistance team to not go to homes with yard signs supporting President-elect Trump. This was reprehensible. I want to be clear to all of my employees and the American people, this type of behavior and action will not be tolerated at FEMA. You say, this is not your policy. You're not political. You don't care about the right or the left. You are simply doing your job and following your orders. So you're telling me these orders came from somebody above. Correct. Welcome back, young, black, and wealthy family. Before we go into her response, y'all go ahead and smash that like button. It helps us get our content out to more people and it helps us to continue to grow our community. Today, we're going to be reacting to the FEMA supervisor, who we can't say allegedly because in this video, she actually admitted to skipping houses that had Trump signs. Now, she breaks down her reasons in here, and then she also says that the orders came from above, up above her, so they came from the top. Maybe her supervisor, maybe her administrator, whoever it was, but she say, these were not her orders. She was just carrying out orders that were given to her. So let's go ahead and listen to her response. Correct. When I first reported to Florida, I was already on another team. I was there as a specialist. This was the culture. They were already avoiding these homes based on community trends from hostile political encounters. It has nothing to do with the campaign sign. It just so happened to be part of the community trend. When you focus in on the, on the campaign sign, you are violating the Hatch Act. So that is something that FEMA definitely wants to stay away from because it was created in 1939, mm -hmm. and that was to protect citizens from being um, from being alienated based on their political stance. So just so we're clear, you're saying that basically FEMA was doing this out of safety. They Correct. were doing that safe because they had some adversarial conflicts with some people with Trump signs in their front yard. So they banned every Trump sign. They said, don't go to any homes with Trump signs. A and if that's the case, why would they come down so hard on you? Why are you the scapegoat? Why are you the one they're saying was, quote, reprehensible for... Why is she the scapegoat? That's usually how it goes. Nobody's going to go to the top person. And I'm not saying that it wasn't her orders or someone else's, but they always knock off the person at the bottom first. So that's kind of something that's common. Actually putting this in place when you did not put this in place. What's reprehensible is they're not being transparent. Why is this coming down on me? I am the person that jotted down the notes from my superiors and my notation in Teams chat was exposed from their surge capacity team. That's exactly what happened, and it's easy to then say, well, ha-ha, it's her name, it's her, it's her writing. Right. Give, make her accountable for it. But I'm just simply executing, again, what was coming down from my superiors. Right. And I'm wondering, because it says things like when on this list that says avoid the Trump houses, uh, drink water, take mm -hmm. rest breaks. So there's a list of things. You didn't come up with those either, no. right? No. So you didn't come up with any of this list. Is Correct. that a fair assess assessment? Yes, sir. And I'm wondering, how do you prove that, Marty? You're trying to you're trying to to save your reputation. How do you prove that that this order came from above? Well, the last time I was that question was posed, I verbally called on all DSA crew leads and specialists that are still active with FEMA and and former to come forward and discuss our avoidance policies, our de-escalation policies. Because to be honest with you, we don't just skip. Just they ain't about to do that because they don't want to lose their job. She basically is saying that she can't prove it. Now, I'm sure that it can be proven if someone actually who's in that department or some other governmental agency can do a, you know, a deep dive investigation. They probably could prove it, but she can't. Just, I know the highlight here is, is the Trump campaign signage, but if someone is in another, like an urban community and it's a different culture and someone feels uncomfortable, mm. We can't go to that home. If you have loose dogs and someone on the team is comfortable with dogs and another person is not, we can't go to that home because of safety precautions. So you this is this is to me is word salad. We already know that 
you're not going to go to a place where there's barking wild dogs that could actually bite you. And no one in their right mind would expect you to do so at all. That's totally different than skipping a house that has a sign uh, in front of it that is supporting a particular political candidate. That's totally different than actually potentially being chased by some rabid ass dog. You feared the Trump houses. The people on FEMA were fearing the Trump houses like they were fearing people with with vicious dogs in their backyard. Exactly, and just oh. and and that's based on the that's based on the trends. You can ask FEMA for incident reports. They yeah. have those because they ask us to report out if there's a, an incident at home. And unfortunately, again, the passionate supporters for Trump. Some of them were a little bit violent. But all of them were all of them were painted with the same broad brush. All of And you know what? That I don't believe. And if it is true, it's probably 0.0001%. So we're talking, you know what I'm saying, maybe out of a, a, a 2000 homes that you went to, you probably got one person that was, you know, saying that they don't want to deal with y'all, but Think about this. These people are the victims of a hurricane, right? There's no food, no water, no electricity. Um, all the city services, state services are pretty much down. And people are, you know, their emergency systems are getting so many calls. We got trees down and everything. And then somebody tries to pull up and actually help you. And you're going to say, no, I ain't fooling with y'all. I don't trust y'all. And it's FEMA. It's the United States government. Why well, tax dollars pay for those things, pay for those services. It's very hard for me to believe that so-called Trump supporters were um, being aggressive, verbally abusive, or trying to attack FEMA people um, coming to their house, try, coming to their house is actually trying to help them. That's just hard for me to believe. I mean, I would literally have to see some video or some audio because these people are scared. You know, they 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 don't have none of the necessities of life at that time. You see what I'm saying? And so they actually need help from the federal government. So why would they turn it away? I don't believe it them as being we're not going to go near these because we think they're all bad people no because some were registered some did receive case inquiries and 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 uh updates yeah some of them came outside and said hi i appreciate what you're doing i would like to participate and then some were very vocal and firm that they didn't want anything to do with fema and mm -hmm. they thought that we were crooks and, and lastly, we've got to go, we've got, we're running out of time here. Did this also happen in other places? This was Florida, but did it happen in North Carolina? Did it happen in other places? Georgia as well. Just ask the crew leads and the specialists. They will discuss their avoidance and their de-escalation methods in the field. Okay. And I think Ms. Chriswell would be happy to know what's going on, truly. Marnie, thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you. Let's bring in the, okay. the FEMA official who was... All right, so this is this is the thing. This is the major point I want to hit on, and I don't want to make this a long video. The thing is, is that you have to have integrity and character, irregardless of the job you're working in, who you're working under. If I'm working for FEMA and you ask me to do something that I know is just dead wrong, I'm not going to do it. See, because you can fire me and then I can take you to court and I have uh, some firm ground to stand on saying that I was told to skip over houses that had Trump uh, signs in front of them, political signs, basic political signage. And I'm sure that I will win. And it will be easily provable because, hey, look, I talked to my supervisor. You can record the conversation, record the text messages and say, I'm not willing to do that. Not only that, if I'm out in the field and you give me a give me a directive like that, I'm not going to skip over my fellow Americans. I'm not going to have my team. I don't care what the hell you tell me to do. I'm not going to skip over my fellow Americans who are um, who, who are victims of a hurricane 
right, who survived the hurricane because of some political BS. And it's a possibility that it might have come from the top. You, I mean, look what's happened under this, this administration. It's been terrible. And we've seen how they've used these, these DAs, these attorney generals, and the Justice Department to go after their political opponent. We witnessed that. So I believe that it potentially could have come from the top. But you can't give me an order like that. Not only that, they're not out there with you. They're sitting up in some damn office somewhere. I'm not skipping over my fellow, my fellow Americans. And obviously, I'm a Trump supporter. I voted for Donald Trump. But if you think that I'm going to walk past a Kamala Harris supporter's house who are in need just because some fool in the office has some type of um, extreme political views about the other side, then you're crazy because it's not going to happen. So to be honest with you, you would not be in this situation if you had integrity yourself, if you had good character yourself. And not only that, black women always allow themselves to be used by liberals. All over. Look at Letitia Johnson. They used her to go up, go after Trump. Now this case is in the appellate court and it's probably about to be reversed. Look at Fannie Willis. Look at the lady at, at the UN that votes against, continuously votes against a ceasefire um, over there in the Middle East, in Gaza. Continuously vote. They always allow themselves to be used by Democrats, and be, they, they're the face of the mess. They're the face of these messes. And it's just absolutely sad to me. And then you wonder why we don't have any respect for this party. And you wonder why you see black men starting to move away from this party. Because all of their crazy, extreme agendas, they use black women to push them. And it's just just damn sad to me. But I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Y'all comment below and let's continue the conversation. Let me know what y'all think. Do y'all think that these were her orders or do you think these orders came from above? And what would you do in that situation? Love y'all. Appreciate appreciate y'all. Thank you so, so much for the support. Don't forget to get a family a hug from me and I'll see y'all in the next video.